Former president and current presidential candidate Donald Trump is now trying to distance himself from a known white nationalist after having dinner with him, hosting him at Mar-a-Lago last week. And despite the fact he won't criticize him because he doesn't want to offend him or his white nationalist followers. So he's sort of trying to have it both ways, not sure who's buying that. On Tuesday, Trump welcomed anti-Semite Nicholas Fuentes to his Palm Beach estate. A source tells NBC News that Trump was very impressed with Fuentes, who is a Holocaust denier, who the former president now claims he didn't know beforehand. Just like he claimed he didn't know David Duke, but he did know David Duke. He didn't know who the Proud Boys were, but he did know who the Proud Boys were. He didn't know, I mean, you could go down the long list. He didn't know what QAnon was, but in fact, he does know what QAnon But he QAnon did know was. Kanye West was there. He yep. was also there. And Kanye West has faced backlash recently for anti-Semitic comments of his own. The president, the former president and yeah. the candidate is lying. <laughs> when yeah. he says he has no idea who he had for dinner at Mar-a-Lago, you have to remember that he also has Secret Service, a Secret yeah. Service detail, and also this club where the classified documents uh, were found yeah. um, is pretty well organized. It's not like someone just walks in there. Yeah. So while several top Republicans remain notice noticeably silent about the former president entertaining known anti-Semites, some members of the GOP are speaking out against the meeting. Congresswoman Liz Cheney tweeted that Trump's actions were, quote, indefensible. Republican National Committee Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel released a statement writing, white supremacy, neo-Nazism, hate speech and bigotry are disgusting and do not have a home in the Republican Party. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, a former member of Trump's campaign team and a potential 2024 contender, told The New York Times, quote, this is just another example of an awful lack of judgment from Donald Trump, which, combined with his past poor judgments, makes him an untenable general election candidate for the Republican Party in 2024. Trump's former Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, another potential candidate for the 2024 GOP nomination, tweeted. By the way, he, Pompeo can never bring himself to mention Donald Trump's name. He's such a coward. He won't call out Donald Trump. And, and this continues. And he did it again here. He says here, anti-Semitism is a cancer. And he, quote, stands with the Jewish people in the fight against the world's oldest bigotry. We also heard reaction from Congressman James Comer, who could chair the House Oversight Committee in the next Congress, and he had this to say on Meet the Press when asked about it. Well, he certainly needs better judgment in who he dines with. I know that he's issued a statement and said he didn't know uh, who those people were, but at any rate, you know, my focus is going to be on uh, investigating the current administration uh, as the next chairman of the House Oversight Committee and trying to get a handle on the massive amounts of waste, fraud, right. and abuse in our federal government. I would not take a meeting with, with that person, no. I wouldn't take a meeting with Kanye West either, but that's, uh, that's my opinion. All right, there you go. Joining us now, the CEO and National Director of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt. Jonathan Lemire, Reverend Al Sharpton, still with us as well. Jonathan, thanks for being with us. It's amazing that Donald Trump actually found somebody that made Kanye West's anti-Semitism <laughs> seem a bit more mild by comparison. Uh, but as Donald Trump's lying and saying he didn't know who this guy was, uh, the fact is he said the same thing about David Duke. He said, And now... He was at Mar-a-Lago. He Come won't on. criticize him because he doesn't want to offend, to offend other Holocaust deniers, anti-Semites. Uh, the list goes on. I, I, I said to Mika this weekend, I'm, I'm wondering if you agree that it's hard to ever say that Trump will reach the bottom because he keeps showing us that it's lower and lower. But even by Trumpian standards, this dinner seemed, and refusal to condemn this, this Nazi, seems to have crossed uh, the Rubicon even for Trump. What do you think? Yeah, look, I think this must be what it feels like to be on the D list when you have to give career advice to Kanye West. And the reality is that 
you know, I wake up this morning, the only thing that's surprising to me is that anyone is still surprised. You just went through, right. Joe, the litany of things that he's done. And I think, you know, what I've talked on your show before about the normalization of hate. And imagine that we're having this conversation when we're still mourning the dead in Colorado Springs. Five people who were gunned down because they were LGBTQ. Last weekend, we had an anti-Semitic mass shooting narrowly averted when the FBI and the NYPD apprehended two men in Penn Station with an automatic weapon, bulletproof vest, knives who were going to attack a synagogue. And yet this is how Donald Trump, and this is with whom Donald Trump, wants to spend his time. I mean, I, I suppose every presidential season, right, we always have a, some outlier candidate, some fringe candidate. In the past, it was Lyndon LaRouche or Jill Stein or um, Tulsi Gabbard. I think now we just need to confront the reality, Mika and Joe, that this season it's Donald Trump. Because when you spend your time, as you said, Joe, at the bottom of the barrel, that's where the public and politicians and the press should treat you. You're the bottom of the barrel. You don't deserve our time. Well, the Wall Street Journal editorial board has a new piece entitled Donald Trump's Bad Dinner Guests. It writes in part, quote, Donald Trump's presidential campaign is barely two weeks old, and already it has his trademarks of bad company and bad judgment. Mr. Trump's failure to vet visitors is an example of his usual lack of organization and discipline. But worse is that Mr. Trump hasn't admitted his mistake in hosting the men or distanced himself from the odious views of Mr. Fuentes. Instead of Mr. Trump portrays himself as an innocent who was taken advantage of by Mr. West. This is also all too typical of Mr. Trump's behavior as president. Mr. Trump isn't going to change. And the next two years will inevitably feature many more such damaging episodes. Republicans who continue to go along for the ride with Mr. Trump are teeing themselves up for disaster in 2024, as they have for the past four. 2017, 2018, <laughs> 2019, 2020. 2022. Count them. Do we add 2024? Reverend Al. But it's also you know, one. Reverend Al, we, we, we talk all the time, you and I offline, about uh, how we've grown through the years, how we've had people that, that, that set us straight. Certainly, Mika sets me straight all the time. You talked about Coretta Scott King sitting you down and saying, hey, you know what? Stop playing for the cheap seats. Uh, move forward. And you said, said that made such a huge difference. I, I know you want to go, Jonathan, with a question, but it bears repeating that, that you and I and other people have people around them that can say no to them. Donald Trump doesn't have somebody that can even tell him, go out and apologize for the dinner because you know this guy is a neo-Nazi. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and the people that you have around you that can say that can only say that if they are talking to you about who you really are. So when a Mrs. King said to me, Al, you can't use that kind of language. I don't care if it's slang. I don't care if it was unintended or if you were playing to the chief seats. It was appealing to, well, wait a minute, I'm really not that and I don't want to come off as that. Donald Trump has no problem coming off as that. And as you and I have had very frank conversations mm -hmm. about that uh, in terms of me and in terms of, of others, and Jonathan and I have had uh, uh, conversations. Jonathan has been able to say, I'm talking about uh, uh, this Jonathan Greenberg, uh, has had, Jonathan would get flack. Well, you did with Al Sharpton 30, 35 years ago, and he'd ask me about it, and I'd have to be straight up with Jonathan. I was uh, un misunderstood here. I shouldn't have did this here. And we grow in a relationship. That's why we can put us hate summer That's together right. at the White House. But what I think is most disturbing, uh, Jonathan, we're three days after this dinner. Donald Trump has not only not, not denounced uh, Fuentes, he hasn't denounced what Fuentes stands for. And now we read The Guardian, he doesn't want to offend that part of his base. So if your base is Nazi-like uh, white supremacist, what are we even taking him seriously yeah, for as a mainstream candidate? You're totally right. I mean, these weren't bad. I mean, that's really funny. These weren't bad dinner guests, right? I mean, <laughs> this is another day in the life. 
I mean, yes, it's appalling. Yes, it's unconscionable. And yes, it's entirely in character for Donald Trump. Again, the only thing that should surprise us is that anyone is surprised. But listen to his former Israel ambassador, David Friedman, who condemned him. Mm. Listen to Don Bacon, the congressman who's not seeking, you know, a presidential spot in the cycle, who condemned him. We need more Republicans, more people in public life without an agenda, simply to say you can't meet with neo-Nazis and expect to be accepted in the public conversation.